Her social media feed saturated with disturbing self-harm content. Molly Russell was 14 when she took her own life. Those closest to her unaware of her suffering. It almost makes you think like, oh, did I really know her? I think it was shocking to see that and to see that it was that bad. Even years later, it is a particularly complex form of grief to process for the friends she left behind. To lose a friend at that age, it's, it's scarring. Devin and Molly made friends doing school plays together, Les Mis and Beauty and the Beast. She had just been given like one of the lead roles for the show that we were doing that year. Either depression or you know, poor mental health can hide almost in plain sight in that sense. The night before Molly died, all had seemed fine at rehearsals. The next day, an empty seat. And I thought, oh, maybe she's, she's not well today. I texted another friend asking, like, oh, have you seen Molly? Is she OK? And I, I think I actually texted Molly as well, asking why she wasn't in school. Taken to a classroom where Devine's parents were waiting, a teacher explained. Well, my first thought was no. And it was like an instant sense of like doubt, like, no, Molly wouldn't. Well, that, it just didn't even make sense. And I remember being ushered into um, our drama classroom, actually, which was filled with, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 um, girls and other students as well, all crying. And that's a sound I can't forget, the sound of that many um, children just in such emotion. Before taking her own life, Molly left a note, quoting an Instagram post which said, I'm just not good enough. She was so loved by all of us, and I think if she saw how much pain we were going through, knowing that she was gone, I don't think she would have made that choice. I think she genuinely believed that we would be better off without her. Her family would later learn that alone in her room, social media algorithms had been feeding Molly content too disturbing to show here. In a landmark conclusion into the cause of death, the coroner decided social media romanticised acts of self-harm, normalised her condition, and that some content discouraged Molly from discussion with those who may have been able to help, ultimately contributing to her death. It's not about whether it's there in the first place. It's about the way that they recommend and push children into feeling absolute despair. It is inhuman and it has to be illegal. We have to have some protections in place to say, actually, you don't get to grow or have profit on the life, the good health, the well-being of our kids. I want people to know that what happened to Molly isn't an isolated event and the content that she's being pushed it still exists today. On Instagram, many of the hashtags Molly searched for have now been blocked, but not all of them, as Sky News's data and forensics unit has been finding out. We're not going to read them out because we, we don't want anyone to look them up. But actually, you found that some of the content that was shown at the inquest, it is still searchable. Yeah, that's right. So one in particular, actually, that Molly's dad mentioned, a, a particular method of suicide. If I type the hashtag in, we see that it is blocks, uh, as you maybe expect, but there does seem to be a bit of a sort of backdoor way into it, which is if I don't type the full hashtag, but just part of it, I actually get an auto-suggestion to, to go to that hashtag, and when I click on it, I do get taken there. We raised this with Instagram, though, didn't we? And they did initially take down or, or completely block this hashtag, didn't they? But, but that's since changed. Yeah, it has. So, as mentioned, it, it seems as though that now, once again, going through the autofill route, we can see what's been posted related to that hashtag. Uh, it is worth mentioning that a lot of the harmful content has been taken down from that hashtag, but now anyone putting new material on there marked with that same tag would go straight on there and would once again be search searchable. And so that's a bit worrying, really. In reply to this, Meta, who own Instagram, told us we've already been working on new parental supervision tools that let parents see who their teens follow. We also have controls designed to limit the types of content teens see. We don't allow content that promotes suicide or self-harm. 125 young lives are lost to suicide a week and from those working with young people there's concern about how social media can sometimes heighten feelings of depression and anxiety. 
I'm both a kind of researcher in this field, but I'm also a father as well, and it absolutely terrifies me. And I don't think we're really going to see what the long-term impacts of this are maybe until 10, 15 years down the line. But one thing we are seeing is a real crisis in children and young people's mental health. So every month right now we're seeing record numbers of young people being referred to their GPs and doctors for more mental health support. Research by Young Minds, shared exclusively with Sky News, suggests harmful content is a growing problem. At least once a week, more than a fifth of young people are automatically shown distressing content by social media platforms based on their previous online activity. Nearly all young people who have had mental health problems say social media helps drive harmful behaviours. And over half said they had sought out content which they knew might make them distressed or uncomfortable. And so far, the only real way to protect young people from harmful content is to employ people to watch it. Extremely violent, could be homophobic, paedophilia. I was just so, so stressed. This woman wants to remain anonymous to enable her to talk to us about working for a leading social media company. As a former content moderator, it was her job to sift through and tag thousands of harmful posts every day. You don't have any time to process it because you just have to continue with another video. You have 30 seconds to watch it and then tag it and all the things you need to tag. So you just go on with your day and then it's not until after you finish that you're even able to process what you saw. It really had come to the point where I felt so unwell that I literally couldn't work. I had to call my GP to advise me not to do it anymore. And I won't go into like personally exactly what happened, but it wasn't far off from, you know, how Molly was... I can recognise the feelings in how I felt seeing all this content coming at me. Did it feel like they are sort of in control of what, what is it on these platforms as well? Absolutely not. The system was just, there was chaos. No one really knew what was happening. We're just a, a lot of like young, just finished their degree, 20 year olds sat there trying to figure out how to judge all this content with no legal background. This is a big company just trying to make money and they don't care about, you know, how that content affects people. And it's that sense of conflict between taking responsibility for the impact and influence that these platforms have and ultimately making a profit, which is the bottom line here. Many of the social media companies that we spoke to said they are committed to making social media safe. But with millions of users and millions more posts, policing it is no small task. The internet is, is a bit of a wild west when it comes to trying to regulate it. So as soon as you come up with one model that you think will uh, help build walls around what we have right now, uh, people naturally find a way out there. So what's needed actually is a real kind of agile piece of legislation, a real agile regulatory framework that includes the voices of young people, that is constantly evolving, so that we can really kind of keep on top of that. The government has been accused of dragging its feet when it comes to introducing legislation to regulate social media firms. But now, after years of delay, the online safety bill is back before Parliament next week, proposing fines for tech companies of up to 10% of their turnover if they fail to protect users from harmful content and criminalising posts that encourage self-harm. This is a fundamentally important piece of legislation, especially to protect children. And it is vital that we get it done this session. The whole government is behind that mission and we're going to do it. But the Molly Rose Foundation says the bill has been watered down to appease free speech campaigners like Baroness Fox, who threatened to oppose it. Now taken out, the removal of measures that would have forced social media sites to take down material designated harmful but legal. The danger is that we, on the back of a very emotional response to something like the tragedy of Molly Russell, bring in a piece of legislation that doesn't just protect children but actually infantilises adults and treats them like children. And if you're a free speech campaigner as I am, this bill is a, a major serious censorship tool. Everybody who has raked over the bill again and again and again would like it to be product safety. We do not deliver cars without brakes and rear view mirrors and so forth. And we must not deliver tech without brakes and rear view mirrors and so forth. I think they have blood on their hands at this point because they have not heeded previous uh, cries for help. For Molly's family and friends like Devine, it's been emotionally exhausting fighting to ensure the government's online safety bill is brought into law. It's very big news that they now want to kind of incriminalize um, you know, the harmful content and anyone responsible for that. 
but um, at the same time, it does feel like it's been an awfully long journey. But of course, it won't bring Molly back. I've actually still got her birthday present from uh, 2017, so that would have been her 15th birthday. And of course, she never made it to that birthday, and that present still sits in my room at home, because um, I'm just really not really sure what to do with it. I obviously can't give it to her, but I think in some way it feels like I can kind of hold on to her through that. Katie Spencer, Sky News. Well, if you have been affected by that story and want to talk to someone, you can call these Samaritans for free on 116123 or email joe at samaritans.org.